This tutorial is on the first and second order integrated rate laws and we'll be going over a brief background as to why these are necessary. So first of all we have a, a couple of ways to measure the rate of a reaction but there's a few things wrong with uh, both of those ways. So our first method is um, if you just measure the change in concentration over time um, the problem with this, though, is if you measure it this way, then let's say your time is on the x-axis and concentration. Remember, the brackets are concentration. So if you measure if you measure it at time zero, you'll have a lot. And uh, over here, you'll have um, less as time goes on. So as time goes on, you start building up product. And you'll notice that if you measure the rate at different points in time here, here, here or here, you're going to have a different rate. So you'll get you'll get something that's tangent to this line, but not exactly representing this whole line. Um, so that's the problem with this method. Okay, the slopes are are not ac are uh, not an accurate description, and uh, the reverse reaction can cause the rate to slow down over time. And uh, we have another method. It's the me the method of initial rates. Um, so this is the one where if you have, let's say you, you conduct an experiment to try to obtain um, what K is, the uh, the rate constant for a given reaction. So let's say you have A decomposes and it makes B plus C. Um, you'll have, uh, and, and you, you do a couple different trials, so like trial one, two, and three, and you vary the concentration of A, the initial concentration. So, and this is, uh, what you're doing is you're measuring the rate at just like these the very initial part of the reaction like up here before it starts getting weird so that's that's why this is called the method of initial rates um, so and so you vary the the initial concentration and then you measure the the rate um, so you'll get like whatever point zero three zero molar per second Okay, and then you vary, so you vary the concentration, you get like different rates, okay, whatever these might be, um, and you use a ratio of these, um, because K will be the same, you use a ratio, and then to, to, to try to determine what X is going to be, and then you could tell if it's first or second order. Okay, the problem with this, though, is, let's say you want to answer a question like this, so given this, this reaction, A decomposes, and makes B plus C, um, let's say you want to answer this question, how much of A is left over after a given amount of time, let's say after um, 30 minutes. Okay, let's say you want to answer that question. How much of A is left over? So how much of A is left over after 30 minutes? The problem with this um, equation here is we don't have time dependence, so we don't have, we don't see the variable T over here. Um, because it's only measured um, at and initially, basically at like time zero. You try to measure it at um, the rate at the very, very beginning. So we need a, a accurate description that involves this because it has time and this because it has k, the rate constant. So what we do is we set the two equal to each other and then you integrate that function and then you'll get uh, what's called the first order integrated rate law. So you take those two components, you set them equal to each other, okay, use calculus, and then you'll have uh, the the uh, um, integrated, what's called the integrated first rate, uh, first order rate law. And this, if it looks familiar, it's because it's in the form of a line. So the natural log of A would be equal to Y, the slope would be K, um, and X will be the T values plus, and this, the shift variable would be the natural log of the initial concentration of A. So remember this zero right here means initial. Um, and this is uh, initial concentration. So when, uh, it's the concentration when time equals zero. Um, you can, there's another form of this equation and if you use um, a, if you use a log property, so there's a log property where if you 
Um, so if you if you move this over, you subtract this ver this term from both sides, then you'll come up with this. You'll get natural log of a minus natural log of the initial concentration of a. Um, and if you use there's a log property that allows you to do that actually um, says that these two things that I'm writing are are actually equal. So using that, um, you can use uh, using that log property, um, you could get the fraction form of the first order rate law. And what this tells you, this is useful for certain problems because this right here tells you this fraction here is tells the fraction left over um, at some later time. Okay, and that some later time will be t. So t here is the time at which um, is left over. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, we'll try to use this in a in a problem, um, and uh, I'll try to walk you through this problem. Okay, so a uh, a first order reaction is eighty two point five percent complete in one hundred and twenty seconds. So it says calculate the rate constant. Um, so eighty two point five percent complete means that if you have uh, let's say you have A and it decomposes to make B plus C. So that means at, at time zero, so at time zero, before anything happened, you have 100% A. Um, now, um, when 82% of that 100 goes over here, so after some certain amount of time, 82.5% of A will become B and C, you will have 100 minus 82.5, you'll actually have 17.5% left over. And the reason I'm doing that is to try to solve for k. So we don't know what k is. And we're going to use this equation here. So this piece right here is 0.175. So this is a fraction. It's not a percentage. So this would be 100, and this would be 17.5. So our fraction here will be 0.175. Okay, and we got that just by reading this carefully. What's what this is telling us? Okay. So uh, and we'll we'll set up our equation, and we're given t in the problem. It's 120 seconds. So. <clears throat> So then we take the natural log of 0.175 equals negative k, 120. Um, and then I get this. I get negative 1.743, if I calculate that, equals negative k times 120. Um, the negatives cancel out, so k would be 1.743 divided by 120 or 0 0.0145. And my units are inverse seconds. So you want to make sure you keep the units here. Um, what happened to the molarity? You'll see that this was molar divided by molar. So this fraction right here is actually unitless. So our only unit is going to end up being time, or whatever this was in, which was seconds. Um, and then since we divided here, then that's how we end up with inverse seconds. And if you recall from... Um, from earlier, when we were looking first looking at rates, um, the rate law for a first order reaction, these are going to be your units, the rate constant. So this is typical inverse time are the units for a first order rate. Okay, so I'm going to have you guys try the the next part of this problem. So this is another part to solve. Um, this will be kind of like the closing question.
So this says what percent remains after 180 seconds. So now we have a new time. Um, and now we have, we, we actually, we know what K is. So remember that K, if you recall, K is a constant, which depends on uh, several things. It depends on the reaction, depends on temperature. It depends on the collisions that that reaction does. So it's a constant for, for a specific reaction. So every reaction will have its very own K, in other words. So so to uh, the reason I'm telling you this is because we already solved for K in part A, and now we, we just have a new time. So we're going to end up using the same K that we used, that we found in part A. Okay, so uh, I'll have you guys finish off that problem. That's the end of our tutorial.